Amen. That little girl knows she can sing, huh? Amen. She sang it to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day you give us to glorify you. And thank you for each and every day for making a change in our life, giving us change, Lord. Lord, it's up to us to receive it. It's up to us to take it and do with it exactly what you see fit. And Lord, I pray that I can change more each and every day to be more like you, Lord. And I pray this nation looks to you for the guidance they need to make the change. In Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Amen. This morning, as you probably already figured out that this is about change this morning. It's, it's change in our life. Trying to make other people change when we need to change ourselves in order for God to give us the grace and the love and the mercy to be able and the guidance is what I'm trying to say here this morning to change somebody else. We can use his words we can use his knowledge. We can use his guidance. We can use his love. See, everything comes from him in order to make a change in somebody else's life. So you and I can't do it. That's just a bare fact. We can try each and every day. We cannot change anybody else. So why we even try? Amen. This morning my passage comes out of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. We're going to start in uh, verse 25. I sprinkle clean water upon you. You shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And it goes on down to verse 30, and it says, I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more real approach of famine among the heathen. Come on now. That about summed it up this morning. Amen. We can't make a change in nobody else's life. I can't even change myself. I can't even make a change in myself without God. If it's good, I can do a pretty good job trying to change to the bad, to the evil. Amen. Because it's according to who we're listening to to make a change, good or bad. I mean, throughout... Just about my throughout my whole life, I tried to change somebody else. I made I tried to make my kids into something they they didn't have no interest in. I tried to make a change in my wife to be somebody that truly loved me and cared about me. Because there were times I thought she didn't. Or I thought at, at times somebody else had, didn't care about me anymore. So I tried to change into loving me. And they're trying to be somebody that they always rebelled against. You know, every time we try to get somebody to change and tell them they need to change, they're going to rebel against us each and every time, right? So you can't... It's not trying to get... It's trying to herd an animal into a pen with a wide gate. Lord have mercy, yesterday or day before I had a chicken get out and I mean... Every time that chicken would get close to that gate, it would rule. Every time it would go close to that opening that it just come out of, it would run the other way. Because I was trying to force that particular thing to get through that gate. And it wouldn't do it to save my life, I mean. And I got frustrated and I got aggravated. And finally when I just backed up and let the old chicken do it on its own, it went right on through the gate. And that's the way our lives are each and every day. When somebody pushes me, I'm going to push back. When somebody pushes you, you're going to push back. It's human nature. When God tells us to do things a lot of times, we're going to push back. And think of a thousand reasons 
why we can't do that particular thing, right? Now get back, raising your kids or having a marriage or just being around somebody. Oh my God, at the workforce. Everybody was getting ahead instead of me. Every time I turned around, they were sitting promoting somebody else up. Lord have mercy, every time the one that I hated the most, the one that I despised the most, I had to take orders from. Because they always would get ahead before me. Why? Because I didn't make the change in my life. I didn't follow God. I only followed my, my own self, not my heart. And to my own understanding. God always brings us through the troubled waters and brings us out on the other side because all he wants for us is to be joyful and happy and love us and care for us. Amen. I know years ago, I wanted, I mean, I was in this football, you know. I wanted both my kids and my boys to be a football player that I can be proud of, and I pushed them into it. And even after my grandkids, they lived here for a while. I pushed them into sports because I bet I just thought they had to do play sports to be somebody. And they were still attending me, Daddy. Papa, I don't care nothing about it. I like to go. I like to be a spectator. I like to go to the games. But as far as trying to be somebody that I'm not, I don't want to do it. Why are you pushing me? Why are you making me do something that I don't want to do? And as soon as I backed off, they found interest in something that they liked. I mean, my youngest boy, he was... I pushed him every way in the world to be a football player and come to find out he was a skateboard pro. Man, he could do a skateboard then. You see what I'm saying? If we will back off and let people make their own decisions, God will step in and make that change. But as long as we're trying to do it ourselves, he's going to stand back and watch. Lord, he's... And the church house is the number one thing that I can think of this morning. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Some churches preach hellfire and brimstone, scare you to death. Some try to entice you into being somebody that, like a teacher or, 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 or something in the church. Instead of saying the bare fact, only Jesus can make the change and only Jesus can make you into something that is good. How many, how many people follow Jesus? A lot, right? But he had a chosen few that stuck by him all the time. Oh, wait a minute. Did they stick by him? He went through all kind of pain. I should say. He had people that rebelled against him. He went. He had his own disciples go behind his back. And he was steady trying to make the change in their life to follow God. And he was following God. But sometimes they'd venture off. But he'd try to bring them back. He'd try to say, okay, we're going to get on this right road here. And the next thing you know, they was going behind his back talking or rebelling against him. I mean, old Peter said, I don't even know the man. So if Jesus Christ had trouble with his disciples, imagine how you and I do each and every day. I tell you, when I first started out being a preacher, oh Lord, I walked out of that church house and I had more. I thought I was somebody and all I had to do was tell them how right and wrong and tell them about Jesus Christ and hold this Bible up and they were going to follow me to the ends of this earth. And that was the problem because I thought I wanted them. I th that was the problem. I was wanting them to follow me instead of following God. And that's the change I'm talking about that we can't make in somebody else's life. We have to put our guard down. We have to love them where they're at. 
we have to say, you're going to have to make the change. You're going to have to follow God. I can't do it. And I was talking this morning, if somebody comes to you wanting to talk, wanting to vent, just listen to them. Listen to them. Where I have lost a lot of people's concentration is, let God handle it for you. Read that Bible. And go up in the Holy Spirit. And start preaching now. And immediately they would say, don't preach at me. Don't preach to me. When I need your advice, I, I'll ask for it. But in the meantime, I'm going to let God preach to me. And the change will be made right before your very eyes. I don't care what's going on in your life. I don't care what's going on in somebody else's life. The only change that can be made is through the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit makes it happen, all things will be good. And like Daddy used to say, we're barking, barking up the wrong tree when we try to put somebody into doing something. You can ask me to do it all day long, but don't tell me. You can ask me how, how to be a preacher. And I'll tell you all day long, that's only one way, and that's Jesus Christ. How can you be a Christian? Only one way, Jesus Christ. How can you follow God? Only one way, Jesus Christ. That's, that's good. And I can stand up here all morning and tell you stories about things that happened in my life. Well, I got about 69 years that I can tell you about. And it's going to take a while to get through all that, amen? But what I'm saying here this morning is the number one thing we need to thing we need to rely on to make a change in our life or somebody else's life is Jesus Christ. That's the only way. Now the number one thing you and I can do when we are trying to change somebody else, let's pray for them. No, don't cease praying for them. I've seen it each and every day. All we got to do is pray. And the change will be made. Pray. And when I say pray, don't put yourself before God. Pray to Him only. And first of all, let me say, I need to make a change in my life before I can ask Him to make a change in somebody else's. It's that simple this morning. Amen. I don't know how... Oh, Mark says here in uh, chapter 7. Oh, he just tells us all about uh, from within out of the heart of men to see the evil thoughts. And it goes on to say some more things. Pride, foolishness, on and on and on and on. You know, we can try to make a change in somebody else's life, but if they change, we're going to rear back on our thumb and say, I did it. I did it. I've made the change. They come to my church and they seen the light. No. You didn't have nothing to do with it. All you did was what? Rely on Jesus Christ to do it because that's the reason the change was made. Because if I try to make the change in this flesh and try to get gratification for it, I'm going to make that person evil before I even know it. And they're going to be trusting in something other than God we have to wait. That's the hardest thing in the world. Ask God to make the change. You know, I was thinking this morning. Say something positive to a person and try to make the change. And then turn around and pray ten times. Make it a ten to one ratio, in other words. Make our, we call it venting sometimes about somebody else, you know what I'm saying. But then turn around after you have vented 
about that person, how you feel about that person, what the person needs to do the whole nine yards, pray ten times. In other words, talk out the flesh one time and then pray to God ten times. And see how it works out for you. I guarantee you it'll work. Before long, you're going to be praying to God all the time and never speaking out of the flesh. Amen? Yeah, it'll happen if we just try. God says anything's possible, and I believe. I believe. sits on eggs and hatches them not, so he that gathers riches, not by right, shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be food. Leave it alone if you can't do it. Leave it alone. Take 21 days to hatch an egg under a chicken. I got chickens out there. And I sat on that egg 30 days sometimes, wishing it would hatch. I got some that'll get right off after 21 days, so it ain't no good if they don't hatch. Some hatch. The old mama happy, strutting around, because she got some little babies. And that is proof right there. If it don't happen, leave it alone. Cast it by the wayside. And try a new one. Try another batch, in other words. If you can't do nothing about that batch, let it move on to somebody else that God has got planned to take care of that particular situation and leave it alone. And when somebody else needs help, God will put them before you and give you the words to say in order to be able to figure it out. Come on now. But we have to keep our mouth shut to make a change. A good change. To really make someone know that God is real, a lot of times we have to keep our own mouth shut and just sit there and listen and understand what they're going through. Not perk up and say, well, I've been there exactly where you at. I had that very thing happen to me. Just listen. And then God will utter the words through your lips to talk to that person and it might not take three or four words to comfort that person and give that person peace. But I am quick to judge and I am quick to, to use my flesh a lot of times when I think I can help them. I can't even think help myself. Only God can. Only God can make things happen in our life. And we have to wait on Him. And that's the hardest thing in the world for me to do is try and wait on Him. Lord God, have mercy. When are you going to make it happen? I've been praying for these people. I've been praying. I've been praying. I've been praying. And nothing is happening. When are you going to make the change? Then I hear about them passing on and, and, and I think, Lord, I should have made a change in her life. And I wonder, did they make it to heaven? And I wonder, how come I didn't? He tells me each and every time. You don't know what that person said right before they die. You don't know how close to God that person was before. They, and I didn't have a dad gun thing to do with. Nothing. I didn't have nothing to do with it. We 
have the biggest job and the hardest job sometimes, especially in their flesh, to do the will of God. To stand on, stand on the mountaintop, preach, or even in the valley, or even in between, trying to make somebody else change. And all we're trying to do sometimes is make God happy. And we're making Him sad. How many times growing up have you tried to make your parents happy when you made them sad? Because you thought that's what they wanted to hear. They th you thought that's what they wanted you to do. And all the time, they were thinking, that boy, that girl will never turn out to be good. I'm going to tell you a little story here before I close. I was growing up. <clears throat> I was growing up. I was growing up as a little boy. And uh, I was kind of on the lazy side, you know. morning, I can, remember, I can remember, I'm laying up in the bed, my brothers and sisters, my daddy, mom and all of them was out there with the mule and the wagon, they were going, and they were going uh, down the cornfield, in other words, picking it, pulling up corn, and I hear that old wagon going through the corn stalk, and I laid up in the bed playing like I was asleep, my mom was waking me up by sleep, I was the baby of the family, you know, and I... I got away with a lot of stuff. And as I grew up, I started trying to find a job that I liked, and I never did find one. Until I was old and gray headed. I think I was, about, I was in my late 50s, and I found a truck driving job. And I, I really, that was the only job that I really liked. And I didn't mind going. But at times, I still pushed back. But making a change in our life, we can't do it ourselves because we'll only mess it up. We have to let God do it. And we can't make a change in somebody else's life unless we make God, let God do it. He is the only one that can. I thank God for coming with the glorious day in the Lord and let God do the changing. Amen.